Hi everyone, I'm Nikki Becker and we are in the fourth What's Going On conversation. As part of Youth Day celebrated today, I will talk about the challenges that the youth are facing with today's issues such as COVID-19, the climate crisis, gender inequality and WASH with Enrietta Ford, UNICEF Executive Director. Hi Enrietta. Hi Nikki, great to see you. I'm so happy to be here talking with you. Today is the Youth Day, so I thought we could start by talking about the unprecedented challenges that young people all over the world have faced throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. How has uh, UNICEF shifted its priorities and work across generations to reimagine a better world for children? Well, Nikki, it's a big but a really important question. So I'll tell you about UNICEF and then Nikki, I'll ask you what you're doing. So of course. For, for UNICEF, um, we are really focused on how to build forward um, through the pandemic and out of the pandemic. The pandemic and very vi viruses all over the world may be with us for a long time. So how do we build forward? How do we think about the world to come? So as you know, at UNICEF, we look after children and young people all over the world, and we're listening to all of you. And part of what we are hearing is that you want to reimagine what your world looks like. And so part of it is reimagining health. So is there a health clinic in your community? Is it stocked with enough um, protective equipment and pharmaceuticals and vaccines so that children and families can stay healthy and safe? Very importantly, is there clean water and a bar of soap? Is there a way to make sure that waterborne diseases do not um, carry on in a community? Because we, we know what killers that cholera and typhoid can be. So looking at a health system, I think we've been a bit helped by the pandemic. People realize how important water and sanitation is. So that's one area that we want to build forward. We want to come out stronger um, in the coming years. And a second area is, Nikki, we are hearing from a lot of you that you want modern education. You want it to be digital. You want to learn anytime, anywhere. And you want to learn what you want to learn because you want uh, skills coming out of secondary school. It's a reason to stay in secondary school. It's a reason that you can then become entrepreneurs in your future life. So you want to use your creativity. So we are reimagining education. We hope we can connect every school in the world to the internet in the coming years. And that would be a big step forward. But we're also looking at all the other pieces of it, like um, mental health, climate change, what can we be doing about um, vaccines the world over? How do we protect young people? What about nutrition? What do we need to know and understand? So it's all integrated into a system and everything comes back to water and sanitation. So Nikki, let's turn to you. What are young people thinking about and doing around the world? Well, uh, it's incredible that if you look through whole history, all the social transformation were driven by the youth and the fight against the climate crisis, for example, or wash or gender uh, is no exception, quite the contrary. Every day I meet more and more young people who decide to transform that fear, that uh, indignation um, about the present and about the future that the adult generation are giving us into action. And I think we do so, so many things all the time because of that fear that it's difficult to tell everything briefly. But I think the most important thing is that we organize ourselves and build networks because we understand that the way out uh, is collective and that the only, um, the only uh, way to, to achieve that is organizing ourselves and there are young people, for example, in countries like Argentina, where, where I live, 
uh, who has political influence in the Congress and managed to pass bills, other young people who organize marches of many, many people. Um, and I think that the hope is there, that the hope is in the people, that the hope is in the movement. And I think that young people understand that. But we need a space on the table, not only to hear policies, but also to vote, to build them because we need laws that guarantee the fundamental human rights of all the children and youth without any type of discrimination. Uh, we need finance, financing system that ensure basic services such as water and sanitation and are accessible to us in a sustainable manner. We demand a feminist, an anti-racist and, and a sustainable future, but to achieve this, we, we have to be included in the conversation. But Edifor, we know that we cannot do all this alone. <laughs> we need international support, even more so after the pandemic hit our society with the, this disappropriate impact on youth. So how is UNICEF working to engage young people as partners rather than beneficiary to strengthen WASH and climate related programs, for example? Uh, well, thank you, Nikki. And Nikki, your comments about the fear uh, of your generation, how you transform it with your voices and your work together uh, with parliaments and other places to transform it into hope for the future, I think is very powerful. So that's something we want to do together all over the world. Um, some of the statistics that we see are really daunting. We have more than 1.3 billion people who are without access to clean water. And that means that, you know, um, 450 million to 500 million of them are children and young people. And that should not be in a modern 21st century world. So let us join our voices in ways that will really focus on this issue. At UNICEF, we have launched um, a initiative, Water Security for All. I think it will help in many ways because it envisions, Nikki, that young people are partners and that you're partners in not just the advocacy, not just your voices, but also in the doing, in the solutions. And that's what lies ahead for all of us. So how do we envision a world that can bring solutions to, let's say these 1.5 billion uh, people who, who really need water? So. Um, I think we have much to do uh, together in the future, and I think we should be doing it together. You mentioned gender, and this is a very important area. I mean, for, for girls and for women, there is a dignity in having sanitation services and water that is just set aside for women. So a bathroom for girls at a school is very important. And sometimes, um, governments do not realize its importance, but it is very important. So we all have to join our voices about what it means for respecting uh, gender and how it is woven through all of our work around water and sanitation. So um, Nikki, tell us a bit more, since you are our champion and because this is Youth Day, uh, what it is that you like to be doing in more programs, what you are doing and what you'd like to be doing with us? Well, um, when the pandemic started, Sanitation and Water for All Youth Reporter collaborated with other uh, youth partners to launch a youth statement, which called on governments to make the wash sector a political and financial priority during the COVID-19. And in addition to that, SWA youth partners engaged in, digina, in digital advocacy to call on Minister of Finance to see investment in WASH as investing in youth uh, shop creating and boost youth entrepreneurship in the WASH sector. And also the youth are developing, developing the key messages to address WASH access and information, this WASH going on conversation with you is one example of all the work that we are doing to, to include our voice uh, in the WASH sector. And finally, SWA has decided to appoint an annual youth champion to amplify 
youth voices and demands. And I think we have a lot of a lot of work to be done, but I think uh, we are like progressing a lot to include our voice uh, in this sector, but also uh, in general. As we are nearing the end of this short but important conversation, ED4, I would love to know what you think needs to be done to tackle the urgent inequality in gender and climate. Such a question. Uh, so thank you, Nikki. And Nikki, I am really excited about the idea of having a youth champion annually, but we want to keep you. So let's make sure that we just add on, we build on each other. Um, as you look around the world, and if 40% of the children, young people and the families do not have clean water and some sort of um, hygiene, uh, a, a bar of soap or something that can help them. It just means that our world will be very vulnerable to future pandemics. And it will also be vulnerable to all of the climate change issues that we have, that resilience, your ability to bounce back as a village. So I see water as the place where climate change and health intersect. And it's a very important um, realization for our world. So we are going to have to talk about it. And having the voices of youth are immensely important. There have been some studies done on investments so that if you invest a dollar in water systems or sanitation systems, do they give you a return? And the statistics show, yes, you do. You get $4 back out of that investment. So in the future, I would hope that we will fo focus on short-term and longer-term investments and some of the initiatives that you have come up with. So Vanessa in Uganda, you in Argentina, um, there's a, a wonderful new winner of our Innovation Challenge in Nigeria who's focused on solar panels to give a more sustainable water system. All of these ideas, these innovations are going to power our work in the future. So let's keep inventing together. Let's try to scale up these solutions and let's get concrete solutions in place so that both climate change and water, good health is available for everyone. I totally agree with you and thank you, thank you, thank you for your time. You have been doing an amazing job in UNICEF, which has helped and inspired children and youth all over the world. Thank you for amplifying the voices of many young people around the world. I work a lot with UNICEF here in, in Argentina, Latin America, and also globally. And I know they always do the impossible to help us. So thank you for that. Well, Nikki, you're doing an amazing job, and I think it's going to be up to all of us to do that impossible together. So it's great talking to you today, and thank you very, very much. <laughs>